Hi and I welcome you to this chapter on RabbitMQ clusters. In this particular lecture, you will get an introduction on clustering in RabbitMQ and by the end of this lecture, you will be able to realize and appreciate the benefits we get out of RabbitMQ clustering. To visualize the need for clustering in RabbitMQ, let's look into a use case. Consider design of a message oriented middleware which has a requirement to have 10 message queues and each of our server hardware can withstand only two message queues. In this design, without clustering, we will have five different servers and we have to create and maintain RabbitMQ resources like users, vhost and policies separately in these servers. And both producer and consumer have to know which queue resides on which server and messages can be fetched or routed only by connecting to that particular server. Now we can overcome these limitations by bringing these servers together as a single cluster and each of the servers can be called as a node of this cluster. In this case RabbitMQ broker is the collection of RabbitMQ application running in each of these nodes in the cluster and the resources like users, virtual host, queues, exchange, bindings and runtime parameters are shared across these nodes. So it's not required to maintain these resources in each and every server separately. For example, if you create a virtual host in a server, the vhost will be available across all servers in the cluster. We are achieving this by replicating all data and states required for the operation of RabbitMQ broker. When it comes to message queues, it is not replicated. Actually, message queues are made transparent across nodes in the cluster. So this removes the limitation that producer and consumer should know about server and queue mapping to publish or consume messages. Basically, you can publish to any server in the cluster. Internally, RabbitMQ will route the message to appropriate server where the queue actually resides. Similarly, you can try to consume message from any server in a cluster. Internally, RabbitMQ will look into the server where the queue actually resides and it will fetch the message for you from that server. But remember, if node where the RabbitMQ resides goes down or removed from the cluster, then the queue will not be accessible. Another limitation that clustering has is, it is not recommended to use RabbitMQ clustering across WAN. So we can form a cluster only with nodes which are available in internal network. I hope you got a good introduction about clustering in RabbitMQ. In next few chapters, we will discuss more about this. Thanks for watching this video and for now I am concluding this lecture and will meet you in my next lecture.